Good evening, everybody. Welcome to your session for this evening. Fantastic to see you all here. I hope you're having a good evening wherever you are, or good morning if you're in the UK. My name is Mike Smith. For those of you who know me less, there's many on here who have attended many of these sessions before, including the daily updates. I'm senior analyst, but primarily the educator at Go Markets. Let's get things kicked off. Okay, before we start, of course, we've got to put over this important message. I just stress that this webinar is for educational purposes only, and what that means is that you do your own due diligence on anything you see here. Make sure you follow trading plans and manage risk with every trading action. So for those recognizing there's a lot of uh, relatively inexperienced guys, it will start right at the beginning, very, very quickly, just revising that each candle is a representation of price action in a specified entire period of the chart that you're viewing. And it allows us to compare the open, high, low and close. Importantly, the relationships between these and uh, quite clearly, those specific candle patterns have been described, which when compared to previous candles may represent a change or a pause in trend. And we'll talk about that in a moment. We're just not going to explore regurgitation of candle patterns, but aim to unpick what candle or series of candles may be an indication about market sentiment. And ultimately, we want to say, right, OK, if this is the case, this is our potential action or this is the reason why we wouldn't take action. So we're going to look at that in a little more detail. but. Just, just to reinforce what a candle doesn't tell us is that if we look at a 30 minute candle here, it looks like a compelling reason to take action. But of course, this candle here could equal this on a five minute chart, which doesn't look so attractive. So just bear in mind that even though that gives us quite a lot of information already, it's not something we can look in isolation. We can't say, oh, look, there's a bullish candle. Let's get into it because there's a number of different factors, a number of things that could be going on there. So bottom line is a, a single candle rarely gives us enough information uh, and arguably a series of candles don't give us enough in, in, information to take immediate action on. So we usually need some additional indicators or key levels or information or clues of some description to create a more compelling case. And of course, good practice is to wait for the next candle before you take action. Uh, but this is this is cool. If you like this sort of thing, you can learn these verbatim. And for those of you who are part of Trader IQ, I think I sent you a, an email on that. I've, would anybody else like that that has got it already? I can quickly add it as a handout. If you give me a second. Oh, there we go. I know you good man. Right. If you look in handouts now, you should see a handout of that download that I shared with the Trader IQ guys. You are very welcome, Lewis. There you go, Joe. You've got it now. And you're welcome, Alison. So what we've got is I've done 14 common and they're essentially a mirror image of each other. I thought that was probably useful. So you're essentially learning seven and then you can do the mirror image. There's a few things which are really worth talking about. OK, so are really worth knowing. First of all, you will note that generally speaking, I talk a lot about engulfing candles. I talk a lot about the, pos the positioning of the closed price in relation to the whole candle as we go along. Engulfing candles are really interesting uh, and good to look for on a bounce strategy it may be that you get an engulfing engulfing series so you might get two or three candles going down and then one big one or you'll get just the one big one straight away completely engulfing the other so either way that's really really uh quite important in terms of saying right there could be a reversal here the bullish harami is also like an inside bar strategy which is commonly used as a bottom bar chart so what you've got here is you've got a candle which is the opposite color which so it's essentially a mirror image of the bullish engulfing and but what we're waiting for is the next candle obviously and we want the next candle to close above this candle here and then of course knowing your, your hammers and your inverted hammers and your doji candle which is quite simply the uh, the open exactly at the close so what you get is a cross that's worth knowing as well. So you can learn these verbatim, but what I really want you to do is understand what's going on here. OK, try and work out what a series of candles is telling you about sentiment. So we look here. That's what we're trying to prevent. OK, we don't want to wait four or five candles for that to happen. Does that make sense? What we do is we'll take profit here before it does this, because ultimately it could do this in a couple of candles. So we'll take it off and we'll re-enter on a new strategy there. This is the sort of candle we like, but like it closing in the top. So we like some volume behind that. That says buying pressure uh, as opposed to selling pressure, which we see in these candles here. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a story of market sentiment through what we're seeing in the candles. It's not rocket science. It's 
simply looking at what we're being told here. So don't get too twisted if you can't remember all these 14 cam candlestick patterns is the message. Look at the message it's giving you. This says, we don't like this. We don't like this going down anymore. We are quite prepared not only to get into this, but get into this with a vengeance. This is really a, hmm, we've got doubts about this. Let's see what the next candle does. So what we're about is a battle of control. Because each candle is, is an illustration of the battle in that particular time period between the buyers and the sellers. It's really as simple as that. We're looking for who's in control. Is it buying pressure or selling pressure? And really, a combination of a strong candle in either direction plus trading volume is about as leading an indicator as you can get. Everything else is lagging. If you want something live that tells you about what market sentiment is doing now, that is it. It is simple as that. You look at any trading strategy that you've got, and if it hasn't got increased volume and closing the top third or closing the bottom third if you're going short, then what I want you to do, I set your challenge here, what I want you to do is go back and look at the last 10 or 20 trades and say, well, what would have happened if, look at all the trades that that didn't happen and look at what happened next. Because your aim is, as a trader, as it says here, is to is to identify or attempt to identify when there's a meaningful potential or actual change of control. We're looking for the buyers to be to, to, to regain control when it's going down. We're looking for the sellers to take control when it's going up. And that really is it. It's really that simple. Because if we get this understanding, we're adding it to our weight of evidence to create those higher probability entries to give you the confidence to continue to remain in an existing open position, and of course, to decide to exit an existing position to limit risk or take profit. And I guess in, in, in what I've tried to do here is, is put it into contexts, okay? So there's three contexts here, whoops, is size does matter of the candle, the body wick relationship, and the before and after, what happens before a specific candle and what happens after. So those are the three contexts we look at candles at because we're not looking, as I said before, at a candle in isolation. We're looking at a series of candles. So firstly, the size of the body when compared to previous candles may indicate increase in momentum or increase in buying pressure or selling pressure, in other words. OK, and if we get a smaller body, it may it may indicate decrease in momentum. So that's the body itself. So we look at a we look at a, a, a any chart. Let's just choose a. Well, let's have a look at our let's have a look at our Canadian yen. So there's the push through. What do we see? We see a candle with high volume trading, uh, closing in the top third. Big body, big body, small body. Just a little bit of a pause there. Didn't move up. Another candle. Then we had a couple pause, and then we had some more. And then again, we got this big candle here. Now you can put on a MACD if you want. And what you'll see, you don't need a MACD to tell you that the momentum's increasing in this because we can see it in the candles. This is just confirmation that that's the case. And this is still looking so good. Likewise, with look at that Euro Yen on the daily chart. So we're getting big candle, big candle, big candle, big candle, not a hesitation. Now we've got a massive one. And again, if we look at the short term, had a little bit of a pause about two hours ago. Big candle with a rejection wick closed dead on the top, dead on the top, dead on the top, dead on the top. Oh, maybe a couple of pips down on that one. So you see what we're trying to do is paint a story. Whereas here, we had a looked as though it was going to break, um, but didn't have the momentum to push it through there. Why didn't it have the momentum to push it through there? Don't know. It just didn't. OK, but it didn't sell off. It, it, there was profit taken on that one. And then it bimbled around that beneath this resistance, small candle, small candle, small candle, small candle, small candle. Oh, all of a sudden we've got a break and a bigger candle. So size does matter. Now, if we're looking at the size of the wicks, let's just check out the, uh, I don't know, let's just, so you see what happens at the top is we get longer wicks. What happens when we, let's just look at, uh, look at anything you like, the, the deal is the same. Uh, we'll look at one of the reasons I called a bottom on the NASDAQ or bottom on markets, which I did at this point here. Why? Because we had all of these long wicks saying, no, 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 we're not breaking through this. One, two, three, four tests 
I mean, five, five tests, I guess, in five days with long wick rejection candles, okay? Suggesting uncertainty, but certain that we don't want to move down there. Interesting that we've got large candles again up near here, uh, but that's possibly data or orientated to some degree. But if we look in more detail at the four hourly chart, you can see it did it there. Smaller candles at the top again. So that's, as I said, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a story. We're saying, right, okay, and this could do two things. First of all, it says, is this the right thing to do with this particular chart? Or alternatively, we can compare something that is moving in a similar uh, in a similar way and say, which is the best? Based on the story that I'm looking at, which is the best candle? We look at, uh, if we look at Aussie Yen, it's difficult to tell because I think these are all pretty uh, pretty rocking and rolling. If we look at Aussie Yen, which is going again. Wow. Okay, if we look at Aussie Yen, uh, this is the first time that's busted. So we look at that candle there and we look at, uh, let's look, just look at GB pound yen. I'm trying to work out with Aussie straw. They're all, right, it's difficult to, both of these are spectacular. Okay, <laughs> no, uh, but again, once you, what do you see? What do you see when it pauses? It, it's a ah, long week, long week, long week, but long week, boom. That's why it's been paced. Would you rather get in? Here, or would you rather get in here? Which is going to give you more certainty? This one, obviously. Right. Your buy order triggered on Aussie yen. Good on you, Joe. Absolutely. It does, Matt D does say there's some more in. There's no hesitation in this. Uh, I'm just checking out lots of comments about my screen being frozen. Sorry about that. <laughs> All good. Oh, thank you for the heads up. And I'm sorry I didn't see it. Sometimes I get enthused. I just I just uh, forget what I'm doing. That, that's me trying to be a nice guy and forgetting and giving you that hand down and then un not unfreezing it. Anyway, back to the plot. So size of the wick, increased volatility. Uh, and maybe, maybe just either uncertainty, of course, or potentially um, uh, or potentially change. Now, the other thing to say about size is size of the candle in the context of the time frame. Now, if you see a 30 pick, can 30 pick candle body in a four hourly chart, that's not unusual. That's really quite um, uh really quite common, whereas if we you saw 30 pip candle move on a 15 minute chart, we'd be hugely significant. So just be careful. And it's one of the reasons why we say, oh, don't use pips in terms of placing stops, use ATR, because it's gonna take into account the average length of a candle for that time frame and for that pricing of the instrument. But I just wanted to reinforce that point. Now, the other thing I wanted to say is beware really big candles. Really big candles off the curve when there's economic data out. Really big candles. We're going to see some on Friday, I'm guessing. Um, uh, can I just check? Sorry, uh, are you operating on them? Uh, Mike, yes, I am on MT5. I've got more symbols because on MT5 you can add share CFDs. That's probably why. Uh, and there's a few more indicators as well. Um, if you're trading share CFDs, it is worth or thinking about it. It is worth opening an MT5 account using the same. You can open one on your client portal. Uh, pop me an email. I'll pop my email in here for any of you that are new and want to communicate with me. I'll just put it in chat. Or you can write me a nice, a nice note, a nice note or two, if you feel so moved. I'll flick onto the bosses and I'll make them happy. They're um, doing what uh, what they expect me to do. Uh, there you go, Mike Smith, Mike dot Smith at GoMarkets.com. So if you're interested in that, might just pop us a line through and I'll uh, talk you through that. Right. Uh, right, just want to make sure that I am still sharing screen. Now, the other, so watch that big, big candle. I'll call it a wide bar, uh, but it's actually a 
just a big fat candle okay so uh what what can we do we can look at a 30 minute chart we'll click yesterday actually that's not okay if we looked at this on a 15 minute chart yesterday where are you there we go rva decision uh, that's what that's where it was and that's what happened next um, we look at let's try and think of something that's uh, so big economic data tends to create this sort of pattern um, even more radical I would suggest on the if we can find it on the five minute there we go there's a the five minute and then what's this this is profit taking okay we often see so we get a big candle and there's often a profit take so if you get a big candle don't enter on it wait for the next one if this is also in the same direction game on if it's not leave it leave it and this actually traced 100 percent. but we see this time and time and time again us open is notorious for it so you get a stock you see it go whoa not only gaps up but absolutely blasts it get a big fat candle and then of course we get a big drop now i think yesterday was the reverse so if we look at something like see ford was a really good day at the office Oh, uh, no, that didn't really, uh, that didn't really hold. That's another story for another day, I think. Uh, previous day. Boom. Okay, so that's the opening candle on Ford. This is what happened afterwards. So we don't, we're not interested in this. We're not going anywhere near it until it does this. Okay, and there was reasons why we wouldn't get into Ford, not least. It was at 1388 resistance yesterday big down candle and so we wouldn't get into this wouldn't get into this wouldn't get into this we'll probably check on some volume make sure it was okay uh, but there is an inside bar remember this was a bullish sign this one here okay so there it is so remember fat red candle there's the green candle, which is inside the red candle, but we wait, we wait until the next candle there, and then we can trade this up. <clears throat> not that I'm advising you, not, not, not that I'm pushing trading share CFDs on a 15 minute chart, but that's a potential way to go. Okay, so size does matter. So what, what you're gonna have to do is, in your trading plans, you're gonna have to say what your, uh, if you see a big candle, you need to put a cap on it. And so it makes sense to put a cap relating to ATR to, to average candle size. So if you say, uh, if I'm faced with a candle that's twice the size, assuming you're going to enter on close of candles, twice the size of the norm, i.e. two times ATR, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to wait for the next candle. I'm not going to trade it. I'm going to wait for the next candle for confirmation. Does that make sense? Remember, you've got to get specific and unambiguous in your plan. So that's what I would say. Right. Body width relationship, two factors to consider. Uh, the length of each compared. So longer bodies, smaller wicks may indicate that that trend is increasing in strength and again we can look at any chart we've already done that look for those small wicks long bodies so so you see despite the fact that um despite the fact we had a couple of pause candles most of these are if you look at the comparison of the wick versus body size most of the time the body is bigger these are the two exceptions that was a test of rejection a test of rejection and now we're good to go again. And so there's virtually no wicks at all. This trend is just going la la, being the technical term. I want to, look, I want to find something that isn't this. So you just. Um, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. There isn't an EN cross. Let's just get rid of those drawings. US dollar on the hourly chart. Okay, so we've got an engulfing. We've got an engulfing bullish candle. There's a, an example of that. Um, wouldn't get into this until on an hourly chart until it had broken this level. Anyway, and then we'll wait for that close. Now, is that close twice the ATR? Well, it hasn't closed yet, actually. Let's just check it on the 30 minute chart. So, this is the one we're concerned about now. Do we get in on this or is it too damn late? Okay, so that's 17 pips. So let's say it closed there, close towards the top of the third. Not volume yet, but we've still got 10 minutes to go. That's going to be previous volume. And you can see the ATR on this is 12. So it's about one and a half ATR. That's cool. We could get into that. The only thing we 
we'll be cautious of is that uh actually just take it back a little bit just before we now we will be cautious of this potential resistance there at 107.30 uh, so because it did that for a while okay so and smaller bodies larger wicks uh, we've already talked about being um higher volatility and then there's a the position of both if you get a long wick on one side of the body and a small or non-existent on the other it could often indicate rejection i've shown you a couple of examples of that so think about what is this candle telling me it's green or it's near right near the top and it had a big long wick on it what does that mean it means the sellers have tried to take it down the buyers have said ah, ah, and moved it back up again we get a few of those as we did on the nasdaq and all of a sudden just i'll pop the chart back up just so you can see uh actually that's no nah, that's nothing going on there um copper tends to behave quite well with this uh with the candles and ndx where are you where are you where are you so ndx on the daily chart we, we, we looked at this and we saw one two three four rejections okay so that, Closing the top half, it's rejected. Closing the top half, rejected. Doesn't matter these candles are slightly red. That doesn't matter to me at all. What matters is that they've closed in the top third and they've rejected and moved downwards. Always wait for the finish of the next candle. Absolutely, Robin. Uh, good call on JD, says Alison. Um, US dollar versus what, Robin? Uh, US dollar index? Uh, looking a bit bearish on that 15 minute chart. If it breaks 102.37, could be down to 102.25, maybe. Um, JD, one of my favorite stocks. I think this was dramatically under, uh, dramatically oversold. Uh, I talked about this there. Uh, why did I like this? I like this on the bottom of this double bottom here. I like this on the fact that this candle, <coughs> this is the candle I liked okay this one here so essentially i suggested that this may move up to this point here this is a good example of where my profit takes so we'll see how this opens tonight actually you can see uh, on these candles here rejection of the upside rejection of the upside same again what so that tells us a story bottom half of the can closing the bottom half and a big fat long wick not a big fat a big thin long wick as it says nah nah so look at this we'll see if this breaks 64 if it hits 64 we rip it off there's also 200 ma even though it's red what we're looking at is the position uh i know that goes against general thinking but what we're looking at if you think about it we're looking at where the price finishes on that candle if there's like a couple of pips or a couple of points or a couple of cents i don't care if it's red um that's essentially uh when you if it was a big chunk of red then i'd be interested there's an example of a doji for those of you not familiar where it opens and closes at the same time always wait for the next candle again that would have been a good yay yep that was a good one so that was uh uh that was on the back of that doji and then the price on the next day moved higher than it and got out of it there so 29 percent in a day you don't get many of them coming along uh so Here we go again. You can see rejection, rejection. A little bit of a candle looking interesting there, uh, but you can see it's red. Uh, but that could have caught you out, uh, possibly. Uh, right, okay. So um, it doesn't matter what asset class you're looking at, it's the same deal. Uh, it doesn't matter what time frame you're looking at it's the same deal what do we see here okay so we see some uh we see a resistance here on the jp225 okay the the cfd that comes the nikkei let's have a look at some of these candles which we, we could have been caught on this one top third but is that volume higher no it's not it's lower leave it and then we've got rejection 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 and a 
chunk of rejections here as well. So again, just to reinforce, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create the story. But what we've got to do is we've got to come up with some rules. Once we've come up with a story that seems to be happening regularly, come up with some rules that say, right, when this happens, I'm not doing it. When this happens, I am doing it. Um, that's what we've got to do. So the, the red thing would be rare, uh, I would say, but it is, um, there's a lot of people call this a pin bar, and it usually works, it didn't on this one, where you get a long, uh, if ever you're trading a pin bar where you've got this really long, I'll just draw in here what I mean, this thing here, okay, where you've got a body at the top and you've got a long rejection candle. Again, wait for that scandal. We want it above the high, the pivot high there of the last close. And this is why we wait for the next candle, because that can happen. By that time, it's triggered your stop and you've missed out on this move here. So just wait, wait, wait. Don't lose some money. Wait until there's a good move up. Uh, and then you can trade to take advantage of this. So always the next candle, always the next candle. Can't reinforce that enough. Uh, and look, I guess I've not tested this, but you EA guys can. Uh, does it have to be the same? Uh, does it have to be the same uh, time frame candle if you're waiting for the next candle? Well, you guys can test that. Too complicated to do from a discretionary point of view. Right. Okay. So, uh, right, we've done that. Okay. So, looking at examples. So, successive candles with larger wicks, smaller bodies suggest a pause or a potential reversal. So, this is what you see when something's in support and resist. We often see this training between two lines, lots of long wicks. Same here. In this case, this was a reversal, but didn't last for more than one candle. We'll see the smaller body and the larger wick at the bottom. That's definitely a reversal. You can see that rejection, 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 rejection. Wait for the engulfment, which is in these two candles here. I'm not sure that's engulfing enough for me. I would like that to be uh, that, that to be there, and then you take advantage of that. And of course, successive uh, successive bodies with successive large bodies uh, with the same colour, uh, then that's a uh, increased momentum uh, likewise here doesn't have to be that they're in ever increasing size uh, but as long as the we've got the bigger body smaller wicks then that's good okay uh, so and then there's the before and after okay as i said i keep on saying no candle in isolation and we've already explored the importance of looking at successive candles not only for color but what body and wick size body and wick relationship and waiting for the next candle confirmation and of course, we need additional information before taking action. So simple information such as key price points, moving averages and chart patterns can all be used in combination with what we've talked about already. I would say the most important one is without any shadow of a doubt volume. So, but you can make your own decisions on which you're adding and not adding. In terms of your exits, obviously, with candle action, which may say this trend is about to be done. So, so you don't have to wait. OK, even if you just adhere to what I've been talking about today, nothing else, nothing else. OK, we've got this potential move up. What happened at the top of the move up? This. OK, so the price action hasn't moved and the wicks are longer. So if we were using a 20 EMA, which is this line here. Or, and we'll stick on a MACD. So if we look at this, and this often happens with the MACD, so the, there are a couple of things we can use here. So uh, let's say we're using the 20 EMA, which is this one here, okay, as a trail stop. All good, all good, all good, all good. Get taken out here, okay? But really, if we just look at the candles, the candles are saying, mm, no, 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 no. Uh, we'll look at the MACD. So really, by this stage here, we should be out. If we look at the MACD, you know, the, like the signal line above the histogram as an out, so we'll be out on this candle here. So either way would be better than this or even using the 10 EMA. So what I'm suggesting is you perhaps look at this and say, well, look, if I have four successive candles where, so if the ATR on this at this point in time was 12 pips, what do we notice about these candles? Okay, so three pips, two pips, three pips, maybe five pips. So you could say if you get three successive candles less than half an ATR, maybe that's just time to rip it off. 
uh, because you've got a trend continuation strategy in your toolbox if you've been listening over some of the other webinars or, or a break of resistance because this could be going into congestion where it didn't do this it actually sort of reversed so just think about that as well in terms of well is it an either or so either my trail stop is triggered or I get three or four consecutive candles less than half an ATR. That's something for EA guys to play with as well. Could kind of use a live chart say DAX and advise a comment as the candles are actually happening. This is a lie. All these charts are live, mate. Okay, so let's look at. So if we look at the DAX, what, what time frame would you like? One minute chart. Okay, John. Whoa. Right. Okay. So what, what are we seeing here? Well, what we're seeing is we're seeing, based on what we've discussed tonight, uh, what we've seen is that we've got, had a succession of downwards candles following a trend reversal, which had small bodies and a large wick on that large wick doji, which we could have got in confirming that candle there. One, two, three uh, downwards. Now we've got long wicks again, suggesting a potential reversal. And now we could potentially bounce up here. The other thing in play here, of course, because we don't do it just on the candles, we'll look at general price action, is that there is some short term support. Now we know this has confirmed it. If we look at closed prices, there's some short term support at 14,475. So this was done in terms of a downtrend. Now we're not only looking for a green candle continuation of this, but we're looking for a break of that resistance there, which could mirror what happened here. And if it does break that, then we've potentially got to move up to 14,500. How is that? But as you see, everything that I talked about there, we've talked about tonight. Cool, Corey, thank you. All good. Great, John. Thanks for bringing that up. That's always good. And what I'm always trying to do here, uh, you're welcome, Robin. What I'm always trying to do here is make it real. Is I can bang on, you can see, read it in textbooks and all that sort of stuff. Candles this, candles that, candles the other. But what we want to see, well, what we what we need is is really some ABC practical advice. What does this mean? to me and my trading and my trading plan. And that's that's what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, interesting there. You see that closing the top third, aren't it rejected and moved downwards? Well, let's see where this goes. This is it could be interesting, but watch 14481. Yeah, that's very interesting for a 13 point move. Not massive, but if you're trading one minute chart, that's good. Right, okay, so as I said, use this if you want, but what I want you to do if you are thinking about this is think about what each of these is telling you about market sentiment. Okay, what is the story that each of these is telling? And then you don't have to remember them because you know what the story is that we're trying to tell here. And these are based on everything that I've told you so far. If you get to what a candle's telling you rather than just verbatim remembering a few more patterns, it puts you in a much, much stronger place as a trader because then you can start to test meaningful alternatives. That's what it's all about. Start with this. Start with remembering a couple of, and as I said, an engulfing candle is good. Knowing the doji is good. But there you see, there's an example of a hammer where you get that long, uh, where you get that long candle down, but it's, it's closed near the top. Uh, so that's me done by thing. What is it going to mean to you? What are you going to walk away and say, right, OK, I'm going to have a look at that. I'm going to integrate this into my trading. So make this a webinar you take action on, follow through. There'll be a recording. will be sent out to everybody who rocked up. And so if you need to revise, then it's there. Guys, your participation has been fantastic. I've loved your questions. Take care yourselves. We'll see you again. Bye bye for now. If you enjoyed this presentation, We'd love to invite you to the free education webinars every Wednesday that we run here at Go Markets. So if you'd like to join our Inner Circle group, just click on the link below. It is a rolling registration so you can get access to the education sessions you choose over the next 12 months. It's that easy. Trade safe and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.